What up, what up, what up, it's your boy, Surf Boy, and I'm coming to you guys today, better than ever, better than ever, but before this video start, make sure y'all hit that like button, make sure y'all hit that subscribe button, and make sure y'all hit that notification bell, man, join notification life, and in this video, y'all already know, I got a special, 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 special video for you guys, man. Yo, you know, it's been going crazy lately, man. I've been, you know, trying to get monetized. Had a beautiful week last week. Yesterday, I had a beautiful day. Hundred, I went up 112 watch hours. YouTube played me. You know, YouTube always got to play me with, with something. Like, I just got a copyright strike for a video. I only got 14 views on I'm trying to get the strike off my channel, but I just can't get in touch with nobody until I'm monetized so I could remove this copyright strike. Man, this is bull, man. They trying to take your boy, sir, boy, 777 down, man. You know, you know, they trying to take me down, you know, but I ain't about to let them do it. I ain't about to let them do it. But um, in this video, we got another special video for you guys, man. You know, I always like spreading positive messages on my channel. In a disguised way, because you know how YouTube is, man. A war on homelessness, man. You know, this is the this is the um you know the video. A war on homelessness. This is George Carolyn, y'all. Um, you know, he always be speaking the truth. He's a to me, he be speaking. It's not even like he's a comedian. It's, it be, it'd be funny, some of the it'd be funny the way he's giving out his message. But he's just, you know, he's enlightening. He's woke and he's waking up the community. He was waking up the community on all the corruption and stuff like that and the government and stuff. So, you know, I, I liked his... I actually, when I watch him, I actually listen because he's actually not trying to be funny. He's actually giving you guys good word. But before this video starts, make sure y'all hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button for real. We need 370 subscribers until we get to 1,000 subscribers, man. You know, that would be a big, 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 you know, a big day for me, man. Once we hit that 1,000 subscriber points, man, that would be a big, a real big, 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 big day for me, man. So, you know, do anything in your power to make sure that I hit the subscribe button. So, if 370 people watch this video, could y'all please, please, please hit that subscribe button. But, you know, let's get straight to the video, y'all. It is a... Nine, ten minute video, so, you know, let's get straight to it. By the way, speaking of American values, aren't we about due to start bombing some small country that only has a marginally effective air force? Seems to me like we're a couple of weeks overdue to drop high explosives on helpless civilians. People who have no argument with us whatsoever. I think we ought to be out there doing what we do best, gang, making big holes in other people's countries. I hate to be repetitious, but God, we are a warlike lot, you know? We can't stand not to be fucking with somebody. We couldn't wait for that Cold War to be over, could we? Just couldn't wait for that Cold War to be over so we could go and play with our toys in the sand. Go play with <laughs> our toys in the sand. And while we're not invading some sovereign nation or setting it on fire from the air, which is more fun, then we're usually declaring war on something here at home. Did you ever notice that? We love to do that, don't we? We love to declare war on things here in America. Anything we don't like about ourselves, we have to declare war on it. Don't do anything about it, but we just declare war on it. We got a war, it's the, only, it's the only metaphor we have in our public discourse for solving a problem, it's called declaring a war. We got a war on poverty, the war on crime, war on litter, the war on cancer, the war on drugs. But you ever notice, there's no war on homelessness, is there? Nah, no war on homelessness, you know why? There's no money in that problem. There's no money in that problem. Nobody right. stands. Right, it's true. right. It's true. Nobody stands to get rich off of that problem. You could find a solution to homelessness where the corporate swine and the politicians could steal a couple of million dollars each. You'd see the streets of America begin to clear up pretty goddamn quick. I'll guarantee you that. I will guarantee you that. Man. Nah, for real. So, man, this boy, this man was woke, man. I bet he got censored so much. I got an idea for homelessness. You know what they ought to do? You know what they ought to do? Give the homeless their own magazine. Give them their own magazine. It would make them feel better for one thing. That's a sure sign of making it in this country. 
Every group in this country that makes it and arrives at a certain level has its own magazine. You have Working Mother magazine, Black Entrepreneur magazine, Hispanic Business magazine. In fact, any activity, any activity engaged in by more than four people in this country has got a fucking magazine devoted to it. Skydiving, mountain climbing, snowmobiling, backpacking, bungee jumping, duck hunting, shooting someone in the asshole with a dart gun, jerking off, they probably have a magazine for that. I'm sure they have. I know they have a magazine. Walking. Walking! There's actually a fucking magazine called Walking. <laughs> Look, Dan, the new Walking is out. Here's a good article, putting one foot in front of the other. <laughs> Give them their own magazine. Give them. Give the homeless their own magazine. You know what you call it? Better crates and cartons. <laughs> then when they get finished reading it, they can use it to line their clothing. That's a good sound business solution. That's the kind of answer you get from a conservative American businessman. Say, yeah, let them read it. When they get finished reading, they can use it to plug up the holes and then piano crates they all seem to like to live in. A good sound, practical, conservative American business solution. <laughs> I'll tell you what they ought to do about homelessness. First thing, change the name of it. Change the name of the condition. It's not homelessness, it's houselessness. It's houses these people need. A home is an abstract idea. A home is a setting. It's a state of mind. These people need houses, physical, tangible structures. But where are you gonna put them? Where are you gonna build them? Nobody wants you to build low-cost housing near their house. People don't want it near them. We got something in this country, you've heard of it, it's called NIMBY, N-I-M-B-Y. Not in my backyard. People don't want any kind of social help located anywhere near them. You try to open up a halfway house, try to open up a rehab center for drugs or alcohol, try to build a little home for some retarded people who want to work their way into the community. People say, not in my backyard. People don't want anything near them, especially if it might help somebody else. Part of the great American spirit of generosity we're always told about. <laughs> Big, generous American nation. Ask an Indian about that. Ask an Indian how generous this country is. If you can find one, you gotta locate the Indian first. We've made him just a little difficult to find. Or if you need current data, select the black family at random and ask them how generous this country has been. People don't want anything near them, even if it's something they believe in, something they think society needs, like prisons. Everybody wants that, right? Everybody wants more prisons. That's the new answer to all of our problems. Lock a lot of motherfuckers up. Right. Everybody wants more prisons. They say, build more prisons. <laughs> But not here. <laughs> but why not? What's wrong? What's the problem? What's wrong with having a prison in your neighborhood? It would seem to me like it would make it a pretty crime-free area, don't you think? You think a lot of crackheads and muggers and pimps and hookers are gonna be hanging around in front of a fucking prison? <laughs> Bullshit, they ain't coming anywhere near it. What's wrong with these people? All the criminals are locked up behind the walls, and if a couple of them do break out, what do you think they're gonna do? Hang around? <laughs> Check real estate trends? Bullshit, <laughs> they're fucking gone. That's the whole idea of breaking out of prison, is to get the fuck as far away as you possibly can. <laughs> Not in my backyard. People don't want anything near them. Except military bases. They don't mind that, do they? No, they like that. Give them an army base, makes them happy. Why? Jobs. Jobs. Self-interest. Even if the base is loaded with nuclear weapons, they don't give a fuck. They say, well, I'll take a little radiation if I can get a job. Right. Working people have been fucked over so long in this country, those are the kind of decisions they're left to make. I got just the place for low-cost housing. I have solved this problem. I know where we can build housing for the homeless. Golf courses. Perfect. Golf courses. Just what we need. Plenty of good land in nice neighborhoods. Land that is currently being wasted on a meaningless, mindless activity engaged in primarily by white, well-to-do male businessmen who use the game to get together to make deals to carve this country up a little finer among themselves. I am getting tired, really tired. I am getting tired of these golfing cocksuckers in their green pants and their yellow pants, and their orange pants, and their precious little hats, 
and their cute little golf carts. It is time to reclaim the golf courses from the wealthy and turn them over to the homeless. Golf is an arrogant, elitist game, and it takes up entirely too much fucking room in this country. Too much right. fucking room in this country. It is... It is an arrogant game on its very design alone. Just the design of the game speaks of arrogance. Think of how big a golf course is. The ball is that fucking big. <laughs> what do these pinheaded pricks need with all that land? Right. There are over 17,000 golf courses in America. They average over 150 acres apiece. That's over 3 million acres. That's 4,820 square miles. You could build two Rhode Islands and a Delaware for the homeless on the land currently devoted to this meaningless, mindless, arrogant, elitist, racist, racist. There's another thing. The only blacks you'll find in country clubs are carrying trays and a boring game for boring people. Do you ever watch golf on television? It's like watching flies fuck! <laughs> and a mindless game. Mindless. Think of the intellect. Think of the intellect it must take to draw pleasure from this activity. Hitting a ball with a crooked stick and then walking after it. And then hitting it again. I say, pick it up, asshole. You're lucky you found the fucking thing. Put it in your pocket and go the fuck home. Go the fuck home, you're a winner. No. No chance of that happening. Dorco and the plaid knickers is gonna hit it again and walk some more. Let these rich cocksuckers play miniature golf. Let them fuck with a windmill for an hour and a half or so. See if there's any real skill among them. Now I know there are some people who play golf who don't consider themselves rich. Fuck them and shame on them for engaging in an arrogant, elitist pastime. Hey, here's another place we could put some low-cost housing, cemeteries. There's another idea whose time has passed. Saving all the dead people in one part of town? What the hell kind of a superstitious, religious, medieval bullshit idea is that? Plow these motherfuckers up, plow them into the streams and rivers of America. We need that phosphorus for farming. If we're gonna recycle, let's get serious! <laughs> it's your boy, Sir Boy, man. You already know, man. We, we turning up, y'all. We lit today. We lit all day today. You mean, he got some valid points. <laughs> For real, this dude conscious. But it's your boy, Sir Boy, man. I'm out. You guys have a beautiful day, man. And I'm out. You guys have a beautiful day. Like I said, let's get it turned up.